Mike's are live, and I'm David Ingram, and you're watching uh, Around the World with David Ingram, and I've got uh, one of my old and absolute best friends in the entire world, and I'm talking about all around the world, is here, David Hancock, and who's this charming blonde you got beside you? Ah, that is Karen Bill. She's my right-hand person. You're right, but yeah. she's on your left. Well, she's on my left on this case, but she's my right-hand person. We're both uh, lefties, so. Yeah, so we're, she helps with the foundation. She does, um, she's, we call her our project coordinator, and she looks after a whole bunch of details. So we were just out today um, doing a, a kind of a PR release. Well, let's get down to why you actually invited me here. Why you're here, yeah, why you're here, yes. We right, called we, you specifically. That's right. Um, we were doing a PR release about the Fraser Valley Bald Eagle Festival, which, which is going to unfold this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, out at, actually it covers quite an interesting bit of area. It goes almost from Mission right up to Harrison, but the center of it is the Harrison River, right where the Chehalis River comes in, yep. um, right at the Harrison River Bridge, and we have uh, lots of signs up there as to where to go for eagle viewing, and uh, we were just out there today, we had uh, with us... Um, Bev from Owl and and um, Rob from Owl with uh, Sansi, he's called, yes. their big eagle. And we had a whole bunch of school kids there, and we were just talking about the festival to the media. We were right there at what is called Sandpiper, uh, the golf and country club, right right there on, on, the, or on the Harrison, actually, right? Looking out northward onto this great alluvial plain of, of the Chehalis. It's a big flats which uh, when the water is down a little bit, like maybe hopefully tomorrow, because with yesterday's rain, the water comes up oh, five sure. and six feet. It's amazing how quickly that water can go. But as soon as the water goes down, all the salmon carcasses are left exposed. And then, of course, in comes the, the flocks. Uh, the flocks, the literally. Eagles. Last year on December, I think it was December 1, I was just a little, oh, quarter mile up the beach there. There's what we call the Eagle observatory. It's right at Eagle yep. Point Observatory. And I stood there with my telescope and did first a sweep slowly of, of the eagle and counted the eagles that were on the beach or, or on the ground on these alluvial flats. Yep. And then I did a sweep back of all the eagles sitting in the trees. And there was a whole bunch of cut banks down through it where eagles were sitting in the yep. deeper and I couldn't see those. But I counted one or two at a time. 2,580 eagles from one place. Now th that And you couldn't see them all. Oh, that's how so many I counted. Then there yeah. was another 500 to 1,000 yeah. down in these river valleys yeah. eating fish, which I couldn't see. So because it's about a mile across, this is a probably, no, no, no. This is undoubtedly the largest concentration of a raptor, a predatory bird, anywhere in the world. So it's more than Squamish? Well, more than it, Brackendale? Uh, Squamish Brackendale had a bigger count, but it's over 20 miles long and several miles wide, and it took, uh, I think it was 60 counters to travel all that in a whole and bunch of boats. And you just saw them right there. And I counted the 25 from, right, one, from spot. one spot, just swinging the, the telescope and counting the ones on the ground. Then I raised it up and counted the one in the trees behind it. And you and I were up at Haines, Alaska, and you just came back from Haines, Alaska. I just came back yesterday, yeah. And how many eagles have they got up there right well, now? Well, interestingly enough, that was a, quite an interesting phenomenon. We had half the number of eagles we normally get. Uh, on the Tuesday when I was there last week, um, th there were 1,289, and the next day, Wednesday, I counted 1,416, I think it was. So they're coming in, but somewhat like here. We have not yet been hit by the solid cold fronts that come out of the Arctic. Yep. And so even though we're talking about that part of Alaska, uh, southeast Alaska, the, the surrounding rivers um, have not yet frozen up. And as soon as they freeze up, while there will be salmon in all those different rivers and eagles the feeding eagles up, they, once it freezes up, you get a crust of snow, it, it's food that's unavailable. Yep. Then the eagles have two chances, two chances two choices. They either go to the Chilkat River, which is where this big bald eagle festival yep. that I was at, by near Haines, Alaska, because there's a three-mile section of river that doesn't freeze. Doesn't freeze ever. Or they get forced farther and farther and south. farther south, coming down here. But again, we have not had that big freeze-up yet. 
uh, of the north. And so a lot of the eagles are still well distributed. And today, I think we counted 357 eagles out in that area. Mm -hmm. So it, they're coming, but they're not, the big numbers aren't here. But usually when they start to come and they're just starting, they're usually arriving 150, 200 a day. They move incredibly quickly. They can fly two and 300 miles easely a day. And well, that's only a three-day trip, you see, if you're coming yeah. down from Alaska, it's only a thousand miles. As the, crow fly, as the eagle flies. As the eagle flies. Actually, David, that 350-some, uh, that, uh, mm -hmm. that's not counting from the uh, Eagle Point Observatory deck. Yeah. So do you count another hundred or some there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, we have eagles all through that no, Chehalis Harrison complex. It's a marvelous area. What I thought was interesting in the, the talk that you gave out there at the resort. What is that resort? It's called Tapadira. Tapadira. Are you going to do that? that I'll be again doing that again on uh, Saturday and Sunday, both of them at one o'clock. One o'clock at Tapadira. Saturday and Sunday at yeah. Tapadira Resort. No and charge. Yeah, at, it's all free. Uh, at the resort, and yeah. that's uh, this Saturday, this Sunday. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you said at that talk, and again, I heard you at the same thing at uh, the Brackendale at Thor's place, that it's the same eagles going back and forth from Brackendale to Harrison sometimes. That, that, that we think of it as this big, long drive, but it's only over a little mountain range. Yeah. W one year, it's about four years ago now, I, it was a, in fact, I think it was a Christmas day. I was out on the Chehalis Flats, and I counted at that time. I was right out on the flats and uh, we had landed by boat. And I could count from that spot 1,080 eagles, I think it was. And by 10 in the morning, it was a beautiful sunny day, and there was white puffy clouds on the mountain to the, to the east and one on the mountain to the west, and a thermal rising in the center. And so the air moving up both those mountain slopes caused updraft, yep. an actual thermal of pockets of air rising in the center of the valley, and there were these three columns of, the, going this way, of, s soaring, uh, of eagles. soaring eagles climbing and climbing and climbing, and they went up and up. And the one that was in the middle of the valley, which is right above me, I watched them on binoculars, and they headed straight south. And I was watching them as they disappeared over the horizon. Well, I could see them literally until they crossed the U.S. border. So within about another 15, 20 minutes, they'd be sitting on the Skagit River. Yeah, the Skagit River for their festival. For their festival. <laughs> the other group that was on the west um, going up this wind, uh, this standing wave of air going up on the uh, west shore of Chehalis, that group then just drifted down the valley. And they would, of course, have been on the Vancouver Dump or Boundary Bay yeah. in, in 20, 30 minutes as well. Yeah. The other group, I'm watching them, they went up and they went up. And they were almost higher than I could see them with my binoculars. I went, well, where the heck are they going? Yeah. And they went up and up, and then they drifted north and west. Which and is I went, well, strange. where were they going? And I got home and got my map out. I hadn't put that together. It was about the same distance from where we're standing to go to Squamish as it is to come to Vancouver. Sure. It's just across that triangle. And so these birds were just, they were having breakfast on the Chehalis Flats, and they were going for lunch, Squamish, Boundary Skagit. Bay and, and Skagit. And, and that's what these great scavenging predators can do. They can move around to take advantage of free and available food so, so easily. Well, let me just uh, take a little bit of a break.